Hello, my name is Derek Kozell. I'm president of the GNU Radio Project, and I'll be giving an update on what's happened in the last year and some thoughts on what's coming up ahead. Of course, it would be great for me to be able to give this in person. However, uh, there was some paperwork that was delayed due to changes in the UK government, and it simply isn't logistically possible for me to be there. Believe me, I wish it were. So taking a look at uh, what we have ahead. I wanted to start with an overview of what is the GNU Radio Project, because uh, we have a lot of attendees coming who are new names, as far as I can tell. You may be very experienced in the GNU Radio Project, but we also hear that there are some people who may use the code, but not be familiar with the overall scope. So to quickly go through it, obviously there is the code base, the core of GNU Radio, its main blocks, runtime, scheduler, GNU Radio Companion as the user interface, uh, all are what I refer to as the core. The sub-projects, Volk, allowing us uh, SIMD accelerated DSP processing, and SIGMF, uh, our new extension, well, not so new now, a couple years old, uh, and maturing nicely to be able to store signals uh, with associated metadata in a way that's very compatible, both with GNU Radio and with a large number of uh, tools and toolkits coming uh, in the wider ecosystem. We have dozens of supporting projects and pieces of infrastructure. That's our website, uh, all of the infrastructure that this conference has been running on. Um, lots of bits and pieces that sit in the background, not so obvious, but which uh, build up to enable the development and use of the core, GNU Radio, uh, Volk, SIGMF, all of these uh, very obvious front, front of house features. Then we have all of the active contributors. The code base doesn't just happen, neither do all of these uh, pieces of infrastructure supporting it. The community that's been built around GNU Radio over its 20 year history is really quite impressive. And it's something that we'll come back to again and again through this talk. Uh, obviously take a look left and right, and you can see some of those uh, people in the room with you, uh, or you may be one of them yourself. Then we have the broader ecosystem of out-of-tree modules. Uh, we have applications such as GQRX uh, and others which use GNU Radio underneath its core. Take a look out for the Fisher talk uh, later on during this week. All of the interfaces that allow data to flow in and out of GNU Radio to interface with other tools, other frameworks, uh, and your own applications. All of those aren't developed by the GNU Radio project directly, as far as you know, it doesn't live in the GNU Radio GitHub space. However, to say that those aren't part of the broader project would be <laughs> demeaning to those as projects, devaluing and uh, really not recognizing a tremendous resource that is part of the reason why people use GNU Radio. There are other frameworks, there are other tools, and yet this is something that has a tremendously broad install base, a huge amount of uh, code and time and effort that has gone into making it uh, actually usable and useful uh, rather than simply shiny. This conference, uh, GNU Radio Conference, is now in its, uh, I believe, 11th year, if I've got that correct, uh, and has uh, been evolving and changing to meet the needs of the community uh, and of the project over time. You'll see this year is slightly different to last year, and we're definitely already thinking of things for next year. We have the European GNU Radio Days uh, and other events that occur around the world uh, and uh, offer opportunities for people to get together and talk about signal processing, talk about wireless communications, talk about the different tools and techniques that go into GNU Radio uh, and other software-defined radio applications. And then of course, there's you. You may have already seen yourself in one of the uh, lists up above, but you're sitting here in this room as part of this conference, or you're attending online, as clearly am I, and I, the Guinea Radio Project without the people would simply vanish into the ether uh, in not that long of a time. Uh, it's something that has become increasingly clear over the years is that uh, simply a code base is not a particularly useful thing. It has to be the whole package. 
and that's something that Guinea Radio has done tremendously well at. Something that I always love to do, and I always loved it when Ben Hilburn was president and giving these talks, is to take a brief look at some of the things that have been done over the last year. And obviously these are the ones that are publicly posted up on Facebook. This is the tip of the iceberg, and many of you will have your own applications that aren't making it onto these slides for various reasons, but which are no less valuable. Uh, we have a book published uh, in Spain and uh, covering an introduction to SDR using GNU Radio. Uh, whoever the author is here, uh, Miguel, I really hope that uh, they're enjoying GNU Radio. Clearly they did enough to publish a book. Uh, Victor Kai was a speaker at GNU Radio conference uh, last year, I believe, or a couple of years ago, uh, and has gone on uh, as a high school student and has gone on to use their GNU Radio experience uh, to continue on to a large uh, competition. We have you know, posts about using GNU Radio in the cloud, tying it up with Azure. Uh, there are some Microsoft folks in attendance. Be sure to catch them if you want to chat about that. Uh, but just posting these online demos, it's fantastic. And it gets a tremendous amount of interest in the project. Fisher, as I said, will be having a talk uh, later on this week, uh, a reverse engineering and signals analysis toolkit. Uh, obviously, there are other tools that do this. However, it's great to see one that's built using GNU Radio and can make use of the entire hardware infrastructure, hardware ecosystem of uh, device support that we have, and also making use of a lot of the uh, protocol extensions and protocol development that has been done that allows this tool to be extended uh, and built upon uh, these different pieces. As I said, events, Electromagnetic Field was an event held here in the United Kingdom. Uh, it's largely a social event, you know, a camping trip. And yet here we have GNU Radio being introduced to a, a broader audience of hobbyists uh, and enthusiasts and likely professionals, but not with that particular hat on during the day. Uh, and then a master's thesis. I could have filled this entire slide with academic uh, papers and theses, uh, PhD theses published actually on GNU Radio, you know, where GNU Radio is not simply a tool being used in it, uh, but the actual topic under study or the core enabling technology where you can read every paragraph and every paragraph is dealing with some uh, interface to GNU Radio or, inter, you know, interoperating with GNU Radio. Uh, and so congratulations to Andra Maria Ives uh, from ETH Zurich on completing their master's. Uh, here's somebody to try and snap up if you're uh, looking to hire people. Uh, although I've taken a look and sadly uh, already employed uh, as per LinkedIn, but uh, you know, this is building up the uh, community and the next generation of wireless developers. And uh, this thesis is actually a really interesting one. And I hope that we can get uh, under Maria in to give a talk to the architecture group, which I'll be talking about in a moment. Uh, I'm looking at the clock and knowing that I need to proceed on with this. So um, FOSDEM uh, runs every year. It's in Brussels the first weekend of February. We've already seen the call for participation uh, published for next year's event. Be sure to add that to your calendars. And here's just a quick overview of some of the talks that were there last year. Uh, we were still running virtually and so it was a smaller event. Um, but you look at this and we have FPGA acceleration from within GNU Radio interfacing with Raspberry Pi GP, uh, GPIOs with a variety of out-of-tree modules, uh, ex adding OFDM radar to GNU Radio, uh, and just a whole bunch of other pieces here. Uh, this isn't a GNU Radio exclusive event in any ways for FOSDEM, but uh, GNU Radio definitely shows its uh, integration into the broader community and its utility as an accessible tool, given how often it crops up in this conference track. I did also want to mention the Software Defined Radio Academy and EU GNU Radio Days, two other recurring events. Uh, their websites weren't so easy to screen grab, uh, but they ran again with an in-person event, and there's some great workshops attached to that event. So again, that's a European-centric uh, event, but well worth uh, catching all the recorded talks on YouTube if you're not able to attend in person. So that's taking a look broadly at the uh, community. And the community, I think, really is GNU Radio's strength. So why is there a president? Why am I here? Uh, and in largely, 
I think that um, the government structure that we have that I'll describe briefly here uh, is one that has emerged uh, out of necessity and out of uh, utility in terms of having uh, a core group of people who can speak authoritatively about the direction of the project and to be that interface between a, what is a large, amorphous, uh, and highly varying open source community of uh, you know, diverse people and projects and interests uh, to be that point of contact with single organizations, single people, uh, and to be able to tie those as a bridge. So uh, our governance structure is that we're an unincorporated association. You can check out on our GitHub repository of all things, uh, our governance repository, which has our articles of association, which covers voting uh, and other logistics. Uh, it's how we can act as stewards of the project uh, and something that's emerged. Uh, we talked about governance in past years, but uh, this is really an appropriate level uh, piece for the project. Uh, we have a whole range of volunteers. Everyone involved in the governance is a volunteer. Uh, we haven't been paying out to anybody. I, we need to represent that whole broad user base as well as possible and to be responsible so that we have uh, documented rules and pathways to joining the leadership team, uh, how to hold the leadership accountable, should anyone in the room or on the stream uh, or anywhere in the project uh, find issue or fault with the leadership. There are pathways for providing that uh, feedback and, and actually removing members as needed. Hopefully that never happens. It has been necessary, uh, but we'll see. It's better to have it than not. Uh, we also publish annual reports about the activities of the Board of Directors and of the General Assembly as a whole. It's also flexible, uh, and I'll talk more about how we make that happen in the next couple slides and how you can get involved. Uh, but it's really all about just enabling and empowering people who are already involved in the project or were already contributing uh, to be able to act in a fashion greater than they would as individuals. So looking at the General Assembly, uh, this is our core steering group, uh, and I certainly hope that I have everyone. Uh, so we have Andre Rode, uh, Bastian Blössel, uh, Ben Hilburn, the past president, uh, myself as current president for one more year and then re-election, uh, Jacob Gilbert, Jeff Long, Johannes Demmel, uh, Mark Lichtman, Marcus Muller, Martin Braun, apologies, Martin, uh, Nate Temple, uh, Philip Ballester and Samantha Plaslo. Uh, several of these people are in the room with you right now. Uh, be sure to see, seek them out or, uh, you know, please wave. Uh, and they are our point of contacts. You know, if you want to talk to somebody about the project, find somebody on this list or the email address that you'll see on the next slide uh, and get in touch. We can act as the clearinghouse to link you with other people in the community uh, as best fits or to, to help move forward whatever you would like. In the end, you as a user and as a contributor are the project and it is the job of the General Assembly to serve and enable uh, anything that is possible and reasonable and feasible uh, to happen as smoothly as possible. So, what we have is a structure of teams and this has been informally true for quite some time. Uh, you know, people gathered into chat rooms and coordinated uh, their actions under these different topical areas. Uh, a lot of that was ad hoc at previous community radio conferences. We've had birds of a feather and breakout sessions. We do have breakout sessions later today. Um, and uh, what we've done is just encapsulated that under a couple of a couple of names and been able to attach leads to them. So head to the GuniRadio.org website and you can see who the current leads are. And we'd like to build up the membership lists of those teams now that they're a real entity. Um, so we have the architecture team leading uh, the development and planning of the future technical direction of GNU Radio. Uh, we have GR Con, the planning committee that has made this event happen. Uh, particular thanks right now, please, for uh, Samantha, Josh, Mark, who have been uh, so heavily involved in making this event happen. We've had uh, Barry, who is in attendance, 
uh, as well as um, Steve Croft, who will show up on a slide a little bit later, uh, stepping in on many of the weekly planning meetings uh, and without a much broader group of people as well, uh, filling in in individual roles, it simply wouldn't be possible to put on this event. So, from me. Uh, the infrastructure team, Andre, pretty much solely holds up uh, the IT infrastructure for GNU Radio. Uh, and then, uh, and that's everything from the Pretix uh, website that you registered your, your tickets on to uh, Indico, the open source event platform that we're running uh, this event on. And we did the call for participation, the schedule, et cetera. Uh, that extends out to our main website, the uh, virtual machines hosting that. Really, the infrastructure team keep the light, keeps the lights on. Uh, GNU Radio Companion, uh, Hakon, is in the room uh, and has been leading the development of GNU Radio Companion uh, purely out of a personal project for some time. And it's great to be able to recognize uh, the amount of skill and time that he's been putting in there. And we've got some great news later that should enable that to move forward uh, at a much faster and, and ambitious pace. Signal metadata format, uh, Volk, the uh, a SIMD acceleration library that I mentioned earlier. Uh, many thanks to Johannes and Michael for uh, owning that and moving it forwards. Uh, documentation, and finally the board, uh, which is currently myself, Mark, and Martin, as mentioned in the last slide. Uh, please, if you have an interest in any of these areas, questions, comments, interest in getting involved, send an email. These are uh, open and public as seen here and the project cannot represent your interests, your needs, your concerns, unless they are voiced. Uh, and hopefully this is gonna provide an easier path for uh, you know, general members of the community to most quickly find the right person to speak with. Uh, when in doubt, feel free to email me. My email will be on the last slide, the board, and we will clearinghouse you to the right team uh, or jump into chat, but here's uh, some points of contact for you. In terms of getting involved, there is the chat. Apologies, dry mouth. Uh, there is the chat, uh, chat.gnuradio.org. Uh, hopefully, if you're here at the conference or attending online, you've already joined, but I got the statistics yesterday for our first day, and uh, no, you haven't. <laughs> so please do. Um, you can either join directly through our website, or you can join with any Matrix account. Um, the main room for this is hash grcon22 uh, on the GNU Radio home server. Uh, join the mailing list, discuss-gnu radio. Uh, there's a link from our wiki, wiki.gnuradio.org, to find that. Um, great for uh, longer form questions and more in-depth uh, things that need more files and stuff attached to it. But the, the chat's great for quick responsiveness and general hangout. Uh, file issues. Go onto our GitHub. I uh, report issues. They can't be fixed unless somebody knows about them. Now we'll talk later about why there's no guarantees that things will be fixed and that there's no set time to respond. But uh, this is really something that um, is quite important. If you wish to, uh, it, you know, further the, the project. Please do review issues, add details, go onto an issue and recreate, try and recreate the issue on the latest code base. We have a lot of open ones that probably aren't accurate. They've probably been addressed. So that's a hugely valuable contribution. That's also a great way of learning the new radio as a tool. Uh, improve the tutorials. The tutorials live on the wiki. We'll definitely see them in a couple slides as well, uh, but they're open for editing. Uh, give a talk about GNU radio to your coworkers, your friends, uh, local hack space, uh, and get the word out there. The more the community grows, uh, and there is out of inevitability turnover in the community, people leaving and people joining, uh, the more we can bring people in, the more the project is capable of doing as a whole. Here's a list of uh, the top couple uh, good first issues on GitHub. Uh, so if you're sitting at the conference and you're not quite sure what to do with that spare 10% of attention that isn't going to the talk, uh, or you just need a bit of a break, check out one of these. Even if you're a really experienced developer, or perhaps especially if you are, uh, this is a great way of really quickly knocking out something that's going to make life better for everyone here. 
Uh, if you're brand new, uh, dive in anyways. And when you hit a problem, because that's that's just what coding is, uh, then jump into the chat or find somebody uh, around. Probably the CTF room is a reasonable place to find uh, some people who are are hands on and going to be diving in. Uh, ask questions and you'll get help. The block documentation, head onto the wiki. You can find any of the blocks that are in the GNU Radio core. Just open up one of these pages and you'll see some of them have lots of examples and details, flow graphs, photos, uh, and that's something that uh, you can extend for the ones that are missing that. Or try out the block and go, hmm, actually, it doesn't quite work that way, or it does, but that wasn't clear, that was not obvious, uh, and document it. We're going to have some work that will be bringing these docu this documentation on the wiki much more in close contact with the tool. So improvements made here are going to have a big impact later on. So uh, again, uh, this is listing out those resources. Um, please do, do jump in. Now, what else is the project? Uh, we are also partnered with the SETI Institute. Uh, this is something that came about uh, in 2019. And we partnered up with them uh, because as GNU Radio grows, our administrative and logistical needs have grown. And the partner that we were with at the time, the Free Software Foundation, uh, was great. Uh, they were doing, uh, they, we had the great philosophical alignment with them as we are a GNU project. However, they aren't experts in software-defined radio technology. If anything, that's our job within the GNU project. Uh, and so the SETI Institute was a really natural partner as they are massive large-scale users of software-defined radio. They handle bandwidths that you don't find in many other applications. And they're completely open and transparent uh, and interested in public outreach, education, uh, and research, all of which are uh, aspects of the GNU Radio project and of our community. And so there was a fantastic uh, mission alignment there. Also, we had to deal with finances and logistics. Uh, an unincorporated association signing on to uh, a contract with the Hilton, not something that's going to happen quite so easily. And no doubt we would miss things uh, if it were simply us as a couple of engineers trying to make this work. Uh, and so I have a bunch of shout outs uh, that are inevitably going to be insufficient to people within the SETI Institute who have been uh, involved in, in supporting the project with their experience and skills in areas that we didn't have uh, ourselves within our volunteer base. Uh, so uh, Rebecca McDonald, uh, who I'll have a photo of whoop, in a moment, um, <laughs> is Director of Communications. Uh, and you'll see her at the GNU Radio Conference. Uh, CEO Bill Diamond uh, has been meeting with me and uh, talking about the long-term vision of where GNU Radio and SETI can uh, work on collaborative projects and also uh, just offering really some advice on how administratively can an organization grow from a small piece. Now we've set up uh, a leadership structure. What are the next steps? How do we develop beyond that? Uh, and so then Steve Bordeaux and Amanda Schenick uh, are part of the SETI Institute development team. Uh, and we will almost certainly be leaning on them more heavily in years to come as we try and find new ways of reaching out to more of the GNU Radio community. Uh, ben Hilburn, uh, in some of his previous project talks, uh, has described how really what we see publicly is only you know, five, 10 percent. Nobody knows the number, but it's very evidently not a large percentage of the GNU Radio users and use cases. Uh, and so we need to find new ways of reaching out to a much broader base of users uh, who aren't going to be engaging in the same ways as uh, the existing people who are publicly represented and publicly involved. Uh, Debbie Collier is uh, leading up the SETI Institute grants team, and there will definitely be some slides on that in a minute. Uh, Shelly Smith, June McGee, uh, handling finances and accounting. Uh, we do end up with a lot of traffic, mostly around GNU Radio Conference. There are hundreds and hundreds of you, and um, that's just a lot of moving pieces and pieces of, well, not paperwork anymore, but line items that we need to get right. 
Uh, we have our taxes to pay, all of that. And they've been a tremendous help with that. Uh, Yvonne Nicholas signing contracts. Uh, in the end, I, she's the one who has the experience to make sure that we're getting uh, the right arrangements out of people that people and organizations that we partner with. Uh, and finally, uh, Lee and Jasmine, uh, who have been doing graphics and swag and other uh, uh, artistic support and design support. Uh, so if you bought one of the shirts, you've uh, benefited from some of their work. I am running definitely short on time, so I'm going to really try and hit a pace here. Uh, we ran a Hackfest in 2019 with the SETI Institute at the Allen Telescope Array, uh, a 42-dish uh, interferometer in Northern California. Uh, it was fantastic. COVID hit. We will be looking to return uh, probably to the ATA, but certainly to a Hackfest partnering with the SETI Institute uh, in the spring or summer of next year. So look forward to announcements on that. Sorry, we don't have a date quite yet. On site with you, uh, Dr. Steve Croft, uh, check out his talk uh, I, at 1130. Uh, Rebecca McDonald, Director of Communications. Uh, you may have seen her at the registration desk or at the SETI Institute booth. Uh, she's got a great perspective on what the entire institute is up to. And uh, Dr. Wael Farah, uh, who is uh, involved in instrument design, DSP authoring, uh, and machine learning uh, at the Allen Telescope Array and uh, have background at other instruments as well. So be sure to find them, uh, thank them for their support of the GNU Radio project uh, and get to know them. They've got some great backgrounds that uh, many of us could benefit from in the project certainly. On to another section that I've inherited from Ben Hilburn uh, and quite like. Uh, the lies, damn lies, and statistics section. Uh, so here we see a basic plot of contributions over time. This is largely meaningless, uh, except to say that GNU Radio continues to be developed at a great pace. And um, while I probably should have put a marker on here, I think you can see when Josh Mormon uh, took over as a uh, lead maintainer of the main development branch, which is largely what this plot is representing, uh, as we can see a great uptick um, from 2020 onwards. Uh, and so look forward to uh, bright futures. Now, this is a great one. Uh, when did you order your ticket? Uh, part of the nightmare of running the Guna Radio Conference is not knowing uh, how many people are going to be attending. And actually, if we look at our gray line here, uh, this is a plot of the percentage of orders uh, over time leading up to the day of the event. Uh, over half of you had not registered as of I well, less than 20 days ago, so less than three weeks ago. Um, yes, this is fairly representative. Yes, this is the worst year in recent history. And no, we didn't have late registration tickets. Um, I'm not saying that we'll reintroduce them next year, but please don't be surprised if we do, uh, because this is stressful. Yes, we reach a great end point, but um, cash flow is a thing. And uh, food and beverage guarantees and numbers and ordering, all of that logistics is a lot easier if we have some information ahead of time. Now, this plot is normalized. So uh, it's a great statistical uh, demonstration and it gives us some good information, but I know that there's going to be people out there who actually want to know the base numbers. So if we take a look at this plot, we can see the number of attendees for the last couple years there's some fudge factors and roundings and errors in here of a couple percent, um, depending on how you count orders, et cetera. And significantly, this is only in-person tickets, um, a plot that I don't have, but will definitely make available uh, later on in the chat, is the virtual orders for this year compared to the last couple years. Um, we can see that we had a great progression going from 2018 to 2019. Um, and we don't have the base number, you know, this degree of detail for 2017, 16, et cetera, but we've basically been marching very nicely up in attendee numbers, which is great to get more people in the room and more discussions happening. COVID hit, ouch, pain, 2020 online, really not representative, so not included in this plot. We had 1,600 online attendees, which is great, but would completely blow out the axis. Uh, looking at last year, I think one of the big takeaways uh, for this is I'm tremendously glad that we ran the event. And that was the sentiment that 
I heard from people in the room and people online. Uh, it was tremendously valuable to run the event and to return to um, to not lose the traction that we had. Obviously, the attendee numbers were much lower, but um, it was great to have the people that we did have. And as we can see from 2022, it's surging back up to the previous numbers. So 2023, looking forward to a fantastic event, um, hopefully with some earlier registrations, please. Uh, one of the other notes here is we can definitely see there's been a large variety when we've opened up ticket sales. Uh, we will be opening up ticket sales a bit earlier than um, this year, uh, aiming for kind of that, that February, uh, February time frame. We'll see when that goes, but there's really nothing holding us up from almost opening it today. More stats. Uh, on GNU Radio, we have um, the number of people who have been cloning. Over, this is a two-week time span, and so we can see that there were uh, 950 unique clones just from GitHub. Now, we also have our cgit at gnuradio.org or .gnuradio.org uh, instance where you can download um, all of our code uh, is mirrored there. It's, it lives on our own infrastructure there as well. Uh, so that's not 100% of the people cloning via Git, but it's it's probably pretty close. Uh, having looked at the 2019, 2020 numbers, um, this is significantly higher. You know, it's a 50% increase, I think it was. Uh, and so we have a lot more people pulling there. But also, if we take a look at the other plot here, uh, the Condor Forge bit, which Thanks so much, Ryan Bulls, for packaging Guinea Radio. There's almost 400,000 downloads there. I would love to understand this number a lot better, but I think the big takeaway for me is that our packaging has improved and more people are installing it through Apt, thanks Maitland, uh, and through other packaging uh, methods and access. And so while we're getting more people cloning Git, I view that as probably the developers or people following um, somewhat older or flexible instructions. Uh, the packaging, I think, really represents a bit of a better view into kind of the uh, behind the scenes uh, dark user base um, where we have a really significant presence. Uh, also, we have a tremendous number of people visiting, you know, 3,500 unique visitors to um, just the main core code in the last two weeks. That's a number which um, really helps me get up in the morning and uh, stay involved. Uh, it's great to see so many people interested. Now, <laughs> we also get to see where those visitors are coming from. And in the past two weeks, uh, a large percentage of our, our visits to the website have come from uh, Falcon Blog, a, a Japanese uh, individual's website uh, where they publish a, an FM stereo uh, receiver with um, some parameters that I can't understand. But um, it's fantastic to see, again, the impact that GNU Radio has around the world. So jumping, uh, as I'm conscious of time as well, uh, into funding. GNU Radio uh, has long had a cycle where we would basically year to year have zero income growth. Uh, our expenses met our income, and that is no longer the case, which is great. And that's a trend that's been happening for the past couple years. COVID was very nerve wracking. Uh, we didn't have the same type of income then that we did from the conference, uh, obviously in 2020 or 2021, but uh, we are now at a point where the project actually has some cash in the bank. And by the bank, I mean SETI Institute's accounts. Uh, and so this conference isn't done yet, but we do expect it to produce some, some revenue, some profit. Uh, and so we're looking at ways of reinvesting that. I've got a couple of notes on the next slides and we're looking for feedback as well. Where would you like to see Guinea Radio spend money? So the, the conference is uh, a huge expense and, a hu and our vastly biggest source of income up until now. We've also started pulling in some grants. Uh, we have methods of donating. This doesn't quite add up to the project uh, having a clear business plan, as it were. Um, we're not a business, we're a nonprofit and um, organizationally just not prioritized and structured commercially. Uh, but there is a need to be sustainable, to, to be able to support the efforts that the community's needs require. 
Uh, so looking at grants, uh, we've got NumFocus, ARDC, and the NSF. NumFocus uh, is a nonprofit in the United States. Uh, we joined it as an affiliated project in 2021. And um, in the fall of 2021, we applied for and were approved for uh, a small development grant. Uh, this is a system that they run several times a year uh, to do a revamp of the tutorials. Uh, many thanks to Mark Lichtman uh, who, for leading the writing of that uh, application. Um, he's been a big, uh, he's been our major interface to NumFocus. Uh, and he also executed uh, the performance of that grant once issued by hiring Matt Carrick uh, of Wavewalker DSP to run through our tutorials, uh, edit the ones that existed, and end up rewriting a bunch of the ones that were there to be a substantially uh, more useful set of tutorials, uh, going in more detail with better flow, uh, better pedagogical content. You know, how do you actually uh, onboard somebody to a tool? Uh, and a lot of that ends up being teaching the plumbing of the tool in a way that's uh, accessible and uh, enjoyable, but getting in the pieces of information that they need when they need it. Uh, he also wrote several new tutorials and pages. Uh, please do check this out. Uh, wiki.gnuradio.org or tutorials.gnuradio.org. Um, they're a great resource, and we've already heard somebody yesterday uh, comment how even after years of experience using GNU Radio, um, this is a great resource for them to, to find and use new features. We also have developer resources for porting uh, from earlier versions to the current. So the idea has come up that GNU Radio should do some of its own small development grants. Um, as I said, we expect to have some money in the bank uh, that we can spend and invest in the project. We won't be spending $100,000 on you know, some huge effort based off of what we currently have. That's not the sort of income that we generate. Uh, but we can absolutely do a series of $5,000 grants, a 10,000 if that was something that really made sense. Uh, and so there's a wiki page called Grant Ideas. Uh, also please email ideas to any of the teams that you think would be able to spend money um, effectively if you have uh, ideas, we want to hear them. If you have needs that you think are well well matched with this sort of structure, uh, definitely let us know. I've included the num focus steps here. This is not something that we're committed to adopting. It's not something that I've honestly spoken with a lot of people about, but in uh, thinking more about this talk, this was something that came up. And I think that we could embrace some of the process here because any decisions that the leadership makes, any decisions that the, the group of stewards makes needs to be uh, accountable and um, responsive to the community. So I, this seems like a nice place to start the conversation. ARDC, uh, also present in the room with us now. Um, please uh, raise your hand. Uh, I believe it's Dan who's attending. Um, ARDC is a nonprofit in the United States as well, uh, whose mission it is to support um, digital communications, uh, science, technology, and education experimentation. Um, and so we applied for a fairly large grant for them. And I'm really thrilled to say that we received this. So it was awarded in March of 2022. Uh, it is $260,000. That is the total number. There's some overhead involved in there. Um, so the working amount is somewhat less than that. But uh, it's to fund a set of core improvements to GNU Radio, which I'll quickly run through on the next slides, and you can find more detail online. Um, we had a six month setup period and we're basically coming out of that. So we're looking to hire on people to uh, execute this grant over the next year and a half. So next year's GNU Radio conference should have uh, at least one talk, if not more, covering these, the execution of this grant. We're, I'm tremendously excited about this. This is game changing for GNU Radio in the past decade. Um, out of this, uh, I'm gonna quickly gloss over this. The slides will be available online. Um, we have, uh, or hit pause, of course, if you're on the recording. Um, installing GNU Radio's been a constant pain point. As much as we get new packaging, there's still a lot that isn't covered. And uh, a lot of the packaging could be easier if GNU Radio itself was 
uh, structured slightly differently. We do a good job, not a great job. Uh, and out of tree modules are largely unpackaged. Uh, as much as Ryan and Maitland have been working, there's still dozens and dozens of out of tree modules that are not simple to install. And particularly on Windows, uh, there have been some community efforts. Uh, I looked, and I think a lot of those have now shut down. It's a volunteer based thing, so it needs improvement. We're going to fund that. If you have experience developing installers on Windows, please reach out. The email address is on a slide or two from now, jobs at kneeradio.org. Uh, same for Mac OS. We want a binary installer for both of these. We want binary installers for out of tree modules. We want continuous integration and testing, et cetera. Um, and we want that for out of tree modules as well. Documentation, uh, taking the usage manual that we have, the block docs, the tutorials, and making offline and portable versions of those. Uh, going through example flow graphs and validating that they work, improving them, documenting them. Uh, in another round of improving tutorials. There's definitely still ground to do there. Um, obviously, we had a great experience with Matt Carrick. Uh, we are going to be looking to hire on more people as contractors to, to perform these pieces of work. Software maintenance, going through all of our issues and just cleaning them up. You know, the triage system is really essential here. We need to cover this. Uh, continuous integration testing, that's really largely been done since uh, by the community since we started writing this grant, but there's absolutely room to improve uh, and add more tests. Uh, and so that's definitely an item that's, that's still necessary. Uh, and our integration testing um, can definitely be extended onto these other platforms. We are now building on them, but there's uh, a difference between building and actually exercising the tool. And so we, we want to improve that. GNU Radio Companion, uh, it's been a great tool for many years. It will remain a great tool, but it doesn't have a preferences window. Um, there's a lot of the documentation that isn't easily accessible. You can't manage and view the out of tree modules that are installed, what version, paths, stuff like that. Uh, the examples are largely unknown to many um, users. So adding an example menu. None of these are groundbreaking changes. Uh, Added up all together, I really think it's going to change the new user experience and just all of our quality of life. I don't want the pain and uh, effort that there is right now to do a lot of these things uh, to continue. We all deserve better. And because of ARDC, we're all going to get better. Uh, so look forward to that coming up. And if you can think of people who would be able to perform this work, please get in touch. There was a tail end of the grant, which covers project management. This is going to be a new thing for the project. Uh, we are actually going to be funding a member of the leadership team uh, to be coordinating this grant as a paid activity. The salary is not competitive with you know, a top tier job, but it's a heck of a thing for what has been a volunteer role up until now. We're also getting professional services from the SETI Institute. So we're hiring. Email us, jobs at gnuradio.org. Finally, I want to talk briefly, as I know I'm at the end of my time, uh, about shifting gears. Uh, for folks who have driven manual cars, uh, stick shift, you know that feeling of when you are pushing your engine as hard as you can go and everything's heating up and you just know that you're going to wear things out if you continue at the pace. GNU Radio uh, has had waves of uh, waves of development, waves of in its life cycle of where the effort is going and where the greatest need is. For a long time, it was simply building the tool. Then the tool became intensely usable and a great resource. Um, and I started coming on the scene around when 3.7 was, was the main version. And we got a great number of years where people were building applications and out of tree modules and a lot of the energy was going into the broader ecosystem. Now we see that there's a great need to improve the core and check out Josh Mormon's talk tomorrow on technically where we're going in 4.0. We need to develop, we need to deliver that work. We need heterogeneous compute. We need distributed compute. We need the ability to more, uh, in a more nuanced fashion, express how uh, the work should be performed and where. All of these things are on the roadmap and are being developed. But in order to make the most use of that, the organization is being put under 
the organization, the, the volunteer group is being put under a lot of pressure to make this function. So we need to shift gears. We need to move to the next level and change what the GNU Radio project looks like in some ways. And I wanted to end the talk really on uh, this, flashing it up. This is a grant run by the National Science Foundation, uh, the Pathways to Enable Open Source Ecosystems. This honestly is a huge stretch for us. Uh, the demands by the NSF on what constitutes a grant application is much higher than NumFocus or a ARDC were expecting. The SETI Institute has a great background in applying for NSF grants and receiving them. The coordination and management and reporting, all of those are a higher standard. But this grant is custom built for Guinea Radio. Uh, it's all about taking an existing framework, which we absolutely have, an existing ecosystem, which we have, but we know that there's a lot of pain points in. We know that the out of tree modules go out of date, authors leave, we have no handover structure for that. Uh, we know that the project as a whole receives a lot of offers of collaborations that we're unable to be responsive to because we're a purely volunteer group and we just don't have the number of people, the number of hours and the office support, the administrative capacity to interface with a fast moving uh, company or organization that's trying to develop some cutting edge feature. Uh, and that's exactly what Posse is, is designed to um, facilitate the jump, facilitate this shifting of gears. So we're planning on applying to this. The timeline's pretty short and um, we'll see if we make it. I really hope so. And that's gonna be a big thing for this next month is making sure that we do. How can you support? Um, get involved, advertise that you use GNU Radio. Um, please let us know that you use GNU Radio and let us recognize that. We're gonna be creating uh, both slides and support documentation uh, and some recognition on our website of companies, organizations, and individuals using GNU Radio. So get in contact uh, if you're willing for us to use your logo and, and name and say that you're a user of GNU Radio. Write a letter of support. A lot of these large funding organizations uh, need to see that the project has impact and, and some details about it. We can keep these letters of support confidential um, because particularly one of the things that's expected, uh, particularly in Europe and the United Kingdom, uh, but also in the United States as well, is the actual economic impact. And we don't need you know, the whole financial records, but what do you think GNU Radio is worth to your organization? Um, we're not expecting money from you, but we could really use uh, some of your information and support so that we can go to these other organizations and get, uh, get that money from them, get these grants. Publish a white paper. Again, that's visibility and evidence for us to, to support uh, what we're doing. Uh, and join a team, contribute your experience. Uh, all of these make a huge impact to the project. So if any of those sound like things that you can do, uh, get in contact with one of the teams if you wanna join them, uh, join the chat, et cetera. We all hang out there. We're there uh, quite regularly and very accessible. You can also contact me directly, uh, dcozell at gunyradio.org. I'm on Matrix, uh, our main chat system, and I'm on Twitter. Uh, if you're more of a, an open and casual person or would like as an organization to start highlighting things, um, we'd love to promote the projects that you're doing and your use of GNU Radio uh, through our channels as well. So thanks very much uh, and have a great rest of the conference. I hope that uh, I can be there in person next year and uh, see many of you in person.